Hello bookworms, it's Jade from Bedtime Bookworm and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm here to give you my review of The Girl in Times Square by Paulina Simons. So this video is going to start out with a non-spoiler section and then at the very end I will go into a little more depth about something specific that I want to talk about that I can't talk about without spoiler warnings. <laughs> Definitely check out timestamps down in the description box as I will have split up this video into various topics so you can kind of jump around and watch the bits and pieces that you want to watch. Full disclosure here before we get started, I did DNF this book. For those of you not familiar, DNF means I did not finish this book. I only read about 300 or 350 pages and it's something like five or 600 pages. So I read at least half of this book, but it got to the point where I knew that I wasn't going to give this book more than two stars at that point. Point, that's usually when I decide to DNF something. If you are one of those people who don't think that book should be reviewed or rated, if you haven't read the whole thing, then this review is probably not for you. I personally am of the opinion that if I stop reading a book for a specific reason, then I should be allowed to rate it and review it based on those reasons. I know that not everybody feels that way, but that is how I feel. <laughs> the second thing that I want to say before I really get into the meat of my thoughts about this book is that I was provided a free copy of this for review from NetGalley or Edelweiss. So this is my honest review. <laughs> First, I want to start with why did I even request this book from NetGalley slash Edelweiss? So I requested this book because it was written by Paulina Simons. Paulina Simons has written the Bronze Horseman trilogy, which I have heard both good and bad things about, but I haven't personally read. So one of the reasons why I requested it is because it was an author that I had recognized and I was interested in trying out. The other reason was the synopsis. This book is described as being a romance as well as a mystery and a family saga. And those are all things that I am interested in and I'm trying to pick up a little bit more. So put that together with the fact that it was an author that I recognized. I was really looking forward to reading this one. I got approved for an e-copy of it. Let's start with things about this book that I liked because there were a couple things that I liked. Okay, maybe one thing that I liked. <laughs> the main thing that I liked about this book is that it was definitely a page turner. It's written in a way that is very readable. Even though I wasn't really enjoying my time with most of this book, I found myself flying through the pages and it was just really easy to read. Honestly, that's part of the reason why I got so far into this book. Even though I wasn't enjoying it, I'd say, you know, I'll sit down one more time and just see how it goes. And then before I knew it, I would have read another like 50 pages. So it was definitely a little bit confusing for me when I was trying to decide whether or not I wanted to DNF this book because I was flying through it so fast. On to the things that I didn't like about the book. First, let's start with the main character. At this point, I don't really remember what her name is, but I did not like her. I could not connect to her at all. Part of it, I think, is the way she was written. And I'm really unsure as to whether she was supposed to be an unreliable narrator. And maybe that's why there was this little bit of distance between me as a reader and her as the character. But I just didn't understand anything that she did. The first thing that happened that I did not understand is this girl wins the lottery and it's a lot of money, like millions of dollars. And she doesn't turn in her lottery ticket until like a quarter of the way through the book, even though she's in desperate need of money. And yet she has this winning lottery ticket that she doesn't cash in. And I just... I had a really hard time wrapping my head around that. Second of all, the other big thing that happens at the beginning of the story is that her roommate slash best friend is missing. I was just really confused by her reaction to all of this. She just seemed very disconnected from that fact. She didn't really seem all that upset about it. She just kind of went along with her day to day. And at first I thought maybe she was like in denial and she really thought her friend was gonna come home. She just didn't ever really seemed all that concerned about her best friend slash roommate disappearing one day. Okay, moving on to point number two. Every single person in her family was terrible to the main character and I just could not wrap my head around why. And I get that, you know, they were supposed to be unlikable. I don't really have a problem with unlikable characters, but for me, I need to, over the course of the book, gain a little bit of understanding as to why <laughs> they're such terrible people. I need to have a little bit of empathy for them. Granted, I didn't read the whole book, but I just did not 
not get that with her family. I didn't really see any insight into their lives. I just don't understand why they were so terrible to her. It seemed to me that the author was just throwing all kinds of terrible stuff at the main character to make us feel sorry for her. Like her boyfriend leaves her at the beginning of the book, takes her mattress, her best friend up and disappears. Nobody knows where she is and there's, you know, an investigation to go about it. Her family is terrible to her, treats her like crap. And then something else really terrible happens to her, which is the spoiler thing that I want to talk about. Moving on to the third thing that I really didn't like about this book and that was the romance. So the romance that happens is between the main character who is a college student and a cop who was investigating the disappearance of her best friend slash roommate. First of all, the cop is like 20 years older, which I'm not completely against relationships with big age gaps. My main issue was more that it just didn't seem very realistic in this instance. What sort of cop <laughs> gets involved with someone that is part of their investigation, much less a someone who is 20 years younger than them? I mean, I'm sure there are cops out there who would do that, but I just found that scenario to be fairly unbelievable and I just, I didn't buy into it. On top of that, the romance that happens hinges on this other terrible thing that happens to the character that I'm gonna talk about in a few minutes. I will say one thing, the romance is quite slow to the point where 350 pages in, nothing had really happened other than that they had hung out multiple times. There were so many Goodreads reviews saying that the tension between the two characters was so intense and that the romance was so good. I don't see it. Maybe you do, <laughs> but I did not feel any tension like apparently a lot of other people did. And then the last thing that I really didn't like about this book was that the mystery was going nowhere. <laughs> I had gotten halfway through the book and we barely knew anything more about the investigation than what we knew at the beginning. The cop in this book was doing a terrible job at investigating what was going on. I really wanted the mystery to play a little more of a factor, I think, in this book than it did. I mean, maybe it does by the end. You know, I went to the internet to try and figure out who the murderer slash kidnapper, I don't really even know, was, but none of the reviews that I could find had a spoiler section where they tell me. There was one review who said it was obvious who did it from the beginning and if that's true then I think I know who did it because there was only one person that was suspicious but I don't have any confirmation of that. There were multiple reviews that said the reveal was not satisfying so I'm guessing I wouldn't have been satisfied by it but I couldn't find out what it was to find out for sure. So those are the three non-spoiler things that I can tell you that I really didn't like about this book. The main character was completely unlikable and nonsensical like who doesn't turn in their lottery ticket when they're they're broke. I don't, I don't understand. Her family was terrible to her for what I can tell is no reason. Three, the romance was pretty much non-existent and what was there I felt like was pretty unrealistic and I just did not buy it. And four, the mystery was not playing as prominent of a role in the story as I would have liked. Okay, so at this point I want to talk about the other thing about this book that is technically a spoiler because it is not mentioned in the synopsis. In some of my previous videos videos I had said that this happens a little before 25% of the book and that I felt like something that happens that early shouldn't be a spoiler. Now that I've had more time away from the book since I've said that, I realize that's not really true. There are plenty of other books that have things that I would personally consider spoilers that happen early in the book or that are part of like the premise of the book. So I'm taking the timing of this thing happening out of the equation of why I don't think this should be a spoiler. I basically don't think it should be a spoiler because of what it is. So this is my spoiler warning. <laughs> if you don't want to know anything other than what is on the synopsis of this book, then you should click away from this video. But if I have intrigued you and you want to know what this thing is, I mean, it's all over Goodreads too, if you look. So if you're ready to hear about the last thing about this book that really made me angry, stay tuned. Okay, I'm so glad I can talk about this now without being vague because I've been wanting to talk about this for so long. Like I mentioned earlier in this review, I feel like the author was just throwing all kinds of terrible things at this character to make us feel bad for her. And this terrible thing that happens definitely made me feel bad for her. And that, my friends, is that the main character gets cancer. Some of you probably think that's not a big deal, but I personally don't feel like cancer should be a plot twist. <laughs> 
I also would have liked to know going into this book that cancer was going to play a large part in the plot. The main character gets leukemia and goes through chemotherapy in the second quarter of the book. I do have to hand it to Paulina Simons. She must have done a lot of research about leukemia and what the treatment is like because her descriptions of the symptoms and the treatment process were so visceral and they honestly just made me nauseous reading them and it gave me so so much anxiety to read those scenes. So I can imagine that if anybody has had cancer or had someone close to them go through cancer and cancer treatment, I could see this book being very triggering for them. I mean, it was triggering for me, even though I haven't really watched someone close to me go through that. The other thing that was really frustrating about her getting cancer was that so many plot points kind of revolved around her getting cancer. Getting cancer is what gets her to finally turn in her lottery ticket because she needs a way to pay for her treatment. After her family finds out that she has cancer and that she won the lottery, they totally take advantage of her. I mean, I knew that they were terrible people, but it's like these two things happening to the main character made them even more terrible people. Her sister or her sister-in-law ends up offering to help take care of the main character, and she really doesn't follow through with that, but she quits her job and basically forces the main character to pay her a salary, even though she's not really helping to take care of her. The other thing is that the whole romance ends up hinging on this cancer diagnosis and that really frustrated me and just was such a total turnoff. So the cop ends up helping to take care of the main character because her family won't step up and so he ends up taking her to her appointments, lying to his girlfriend by the way that he's doing this. He ends up you know taking her to and from chemo and helping her on those days where she's really sick from her treatment and that's where the romance starts to develop. After all of the other things that I didn't like about this book, having so much of it be focused on her cancer diagnosis and so much of the plot hinge on that element just really frustrated me and made me so angry and I just did not want to finish it. For me, all of those elements put together just was not going to make for a good reading experience. So those are all of the reasons why I decided to not finish this book after reading a little more than half of it and why I gave this book two out of five stars. I know that there were a lot of people out there who really love this book. I mean, you can just look at the Goodreads ratings and see. So I know that I'm definitely in the minority, but if you look at the negative book reviews for this on Goodreads, I'm definitely not the only one who felt this way. So that was definitely validating to see. Let me know down in the comment section if you've read this book, if you liked it, if you didn't like it. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you like bookish content. I post one to two times a week. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, bookworms, keep reading. Bye business, which I guess also second item of, uh, uh, and I just, I had, I don't understand why they were so terrible to someone that they are fam, who the murderer or the kidnapper or whatever was happening, like who did all of that? Blech. And I did not think that should have really been, and, and I feel like that should not, okay, so the I post bookish content twice a week, the